What's up? Hello, hello. How's everyone doing? All right, so. Meh. What's going on, guys? Lower that a bit. Messing in Maya, nice. What's the plan today? All right, so. I lower this music for myself. Um, first, I'll probably switch to the scene. <laughs> it's my Friday. Feels good. Feels good. What's up, dude, man? Punky. Freezy Demon. 3D Licks. Hostile G Force with the uh, auto host. Thank you. Roto, hello. Corey, thank you for the uh, the kind uh, kind words. Bricks, let's go. Um, so remember how we were doing some retopo stuff. Uh, I ended up staying up super late that day because I got really excited uh, talking with Ben Wilson. Um, we talked about how best to use Dynamesh, and I'm going to show you guys kind of what. I'm doing now through Dynamesh and how I'm approaching making a low poly off of this. So just for workflow purposes, what I've done is um, I take the, so you know if you do a save as or a save, you're saving your project file. I'm saving a topo version. Usually you should have a naming convention with this. So maybe like this is um, wall set, ZBrush. ZB, let's let's say ZB main, and then we'll name this one Topo. So we're saving to the Topo, and the Topo is basically a duplicate of the same scene, but I'm going to Dynamesh all of them. So this is going to get a little. It's a little weird. I'm still working out some kinks with it, but um, let's see how this goes. So if you go to the geometry tab on the side here, um, clay polish, if you click it, kind of pushes geometry towards uh, shapes that exist. You can see you lose a little bit of detail, but detail's not really, oh, this is a, the perfect model to show some of this stuff off. Um, the details aren't what you're worried about as far as those details that were getting blurred away. What you're more interested in is this is this stuff and maintaining these edges because those are the ones that are going to give you your silhouette, right? So as long as those are maintained, you're you're doing pretty good. So let's undo that. Uh, I usually am turning up the sharpen a bit and then how many times a sharpen happens maybe by I don't know let's say let's say 10 let's see what happens so do that so we're getting some pretty pretty good creasing now the reason we're doing this creasing is because the dynamesh or the decimation master is actually uh, trying to maintain where there's high fidelity detail so like you can go through and smooth out some of this stuff. You don't have to. I'm just giving you an example. Like, you don't want it to pay attention to this. So let's go ahead and just do that. Some weird stuff there. So and then you have things like this. This crease that's here. So I'm just using the uh, the trim dynamic brush with the Alt key and erasing that because you wouldn't want that detail in your high poly anyways. 
And we'll get rid of this stuff. Okay, now I think we have a good a good mesh for getting a low poly. So we'll pre-process this mesh and then we'll see what we get from this. How you guys doing? How you doing, Melt? So the idea behind this process is kind of this is going to get away from the manual work that I usually do because I'm really picky about low polys. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so we got this. It's definitely more stylized, right? You're it's it's cleaner. There's less uh, information that is just there for detail and more information about the actual shape. So it's going to be much easier to decimate. So let's start by, let's decimate it to 1% of its original version. So we're already looking pretty good. Um, these details here are pretty dense still. Yo, dude, man. Yo. So these are still pretty detailed here, and I kind of want to uh, make sure that these maintain a bit of detail as we're going down. That way we don't uh, get really, really heavy breakdowns in the uh, side detail there. So let's just, let's do like 20%. Look at that. That's hilarious. A little lower than that. Let's try eight. I'm gonna smooth these out so we just get a little bit of detail inside inside of these larger flat surfaces. And then we'll pre-process it again. Nice thing is the pre-processing is gonna be faster each time you do this, right? So let's let's do eight percent of this and see what we get. We're getting closer. Let's see if one is too too much. I mean that's that's looking pretty. That's actually looking pretty close to what um, what I would probably model by hand. And you're getting some weird stuff like this here, where like uh, the edge is terminating into another. Just a really close edges, which is pretty bad. Um, that also might be getting a little picky as well. Let me do it once over the whole mesh, and then I'll go back to that. See this area might be. That looks too high poly in there. So probably uh, clean that up manually in in ZBrush. But overall, it's looking pretty nice. There's this stuff too, like this. Uh, we don't need that edge there. This we don't need. This uh, it's like a frame bevel almost. What's up, Chris? I see you lurking. Okay, so let's uh, let's say that this is good. Let's say this is good to go. And there's just some some minor issues we have to fix. So we can. Uh, that's when I actually go to the Z Modeler brush. This brush actually takes a minute to explain, so I'll go ahead and explain that now. Uh, it does things based on, let me save here, it does things based on what you have highlighted. So if you have a polygon highlighted or an edge or a vert, we'll tell it what to do. And it, it'll, you'll see in text, it says, it says inflate a poly. If you hold down the space bar, instead of getting a brush scaler like, um, like we get here, um, there's no... There's no reason to have a large brush when you're using the Z modeler uh, brush. So holding down the space bar actually gives you options as to what this brush can do. Oh, you know what? I should probably, um, where the heck? Hang on. 
apparently my Discord is not on. What's up, Dazzo? How you doing? Okay, so we're hovering over this poly. If you hold down the space bar, you get all these these options that you can do uh, to the poly that you've that you have your mouse over. And uh, for all this stuff is based on target. So like things that are in front, things that are within the brush radius. So we're just going to say a single poly, so it's it's respecting only what we're mousing over. Uh, so we can do things like, um, let's see here. We'll see if this crashes, but spinning edges, edge extrude. So if I, if I mouse over an edge and hit spacebar, I get settings for edge. Uh, and for revert, settings for revert. So you can see now it says spin edge. So if I click that edge, it will, it will spin. This is the crash I was talking about. Hang on. I think the spinning gets confused when you uh, tell it to spin an edge, but there are two edges under the brush. So I'll just load it up again. I'm actually gonna, since some people just got in here wondering if they missed some stuff, spin to win. <laughs> Let's see here, so we'll go to Topo. I'll do it to another piece as well. So, okay, so we got this mesh. Let's, uh, let's just do the Z model or stuff really quick. Just shrink the pen down. Just look around for something that I want to move. So like this vert here, like maybe I can use that vert for, um, what do you call it? For vertex painting. It wouldn't be very good. But just having uh, these long polys here kind of sucks. So like holding down shift and smoothing single verts, you can kind of offset them. Oh wow, there's all types of horrible things going on. Um, like for example, these little short ones here kind of, maybe you shift move that one out. You can just do that. So we're just kind of, in, right now we're just inspecting the mesh to try and make sure there's nothing horrible going on. You can also, if you um, turn your perspective off, press P, right? You can tell that it's off because right here it's not highlighted. If it's highlighted, your perspective's on. It's not, it's off. And then you can go onto the vert, and then, uh, let's see here. Just move. You can just grab it and move it wherever you want. And as long as you're, uh, as long as you're not uh, skewed or angled, it's gonna, it's gonna move along the face. Which is pretty nice. Oh yeah, so this is a good one to It's a good one actually to get rid of. See if there's a good vert collapse or edge collapsing scenario. So this edge right here, maybe I want those combined with the uh, edge highlighted. Hit space bar, I should be able to bridge now. Collapse, collapse. You just click on that and it collapses. And then the on vert still moves, so okay, I can move that around. 
Inset a poly. Look at that. You can also, if you hold Alt, you can like do a temporary uh, poly group, and then you can inset all of them together. You can inset uh, all polygons. Let's see. It just does everything. It looks like. I highlight all these. Let's do uh, poly group border. Nope. Polygroup all. Polygroup island, no. Huh, all right, well, we're gonna have to look at that Z model or stuff more, because I'm, I'm finding out it's pretty freaking powerful with stuff. Uh, okay, so this looks pretty good. Uh, let's say, We'll just export that out and then I will go into Moto. And then we'll do a quick unwrap on it. And I can show you how I'm unwrapping using this this way. We'll do a little bit of cleanup on it as well. Just some weird stuff going on. What's up, face melt? All the way in modifiers in the bottom of the menu. Thanks, comedy. Okay, so we're looking at this guy. Let's clean up a few things. need any of these this is where it kind of breaks down a bit this process but I mean you can just choose to not care <laughs> all right so let's say this is let's say this is fine we'll just we'll just go with this go and we will soften everything Let me make sure I'm looking at this correctly F5 pulls up your command history so select coplanar edges that's what we want to do We'll map a key to it. Hmm. I'm like, which key? Let's do shift one. That's fine. What? on here what is what is flatness about oh it's so weird that it selects the okay we're gonna have to use a script to do it but essentially what I'm doing is doing a coplanar selection I'm in the middle of reinstalling stuff so I don't have the script installed Essentially what we're doing is we're coplanar selecting these details. So basically I can select one poly like this, fire the coplanar and it will select everything within like a certain threshold. So like all these, you can do it manually as well. It just takes a little bit more time. 
and then uh, and then I just harden that. And you can see if I uh, go to game tools. Oh man, none of this stuff's set up. It's gonna tear this out. Okay, so if I select the hard edges, you can see like we have that piece. And I'll do that to all the sides. And I will open up I will open up the other one to show you the result. It's beautiful. What are you doing? What are you doing? How's everyone doing? Dude, it's so cold here. So cold. Come on, Murder. Get Painter up too while we're at it. Oh man, got the uh, reset camera too. Ugh. If you're having a hard time with the camera rotation of Moto, it's the default, it's kind of strange. Uh, you can press zero and then go up to the very top here. Uh, it's like drawing and control. Go down to the bottom and uh, trackball rotation, just set that to no, and then it'll behave a lot more like. Respect. It'll, uh, it'll use the viewport default kind of rotation that you expect from other 3D programs. So we'll look at the other piece that I did last night. So this one, you can see if I, I'm like, why doesn't it have the uh, select? That's so weird. We'll just select hard edges that way. No, cool. What in the French toast is happening? Ah, I see. It's not even cool. Anyways, so there's hard edges, right? And if you look in the UVs, I select the hard edges uh, that I've done through Coplanar, Coplanar uh, selection. And then I just do a unwrap see here UV editor and then fit fit UVs unwrap tool if you click that guy with the edges of the islands uh, from the smoothing groups click that and it will just unwrap that and then I just pack it and then bring that into substance painter and so here's that guy with the uh, edges and the UVs We go down bake textures. We locate the high poly. So the high poly is just the. If you go into ZBrush and I load the main file, this is before I did the retopology. What's up, Xenobite? So before I did the down resing, right, and I saved it to a topo file, there's the main file. That's the reason you save the main file so you can export the high poly meshes just directly as an OBJ. And then you just select the OBJ, and then uh, usually I start with a low low res bake, just to see if everything is good because it'll come out quickly. It might be too low res. <laughs> Let's try 512. So the most part, it looks like it's doing okay. It just needs more resolution in order to get the. Uh, the edge is masked, but you can see it's kind of, it's doing what we're expecting it to. Is there any other? Oh yeah, this is, this is a better side to check. So yeah, now it looks like we're just, we're just having problems because of the resolution of the bake. So we'll just turn that up to 2048 and then just bake that all out.
Just wait for a second. Dude, I'm full of caffeine, so I'm moving like a thousand miles an hour. If you guys have any questions, just let me know. Uh, after we bake this one out, we'll go ahead and look at, uh, we'll do another one. Building another low poly in ZBrush. Maybe we'll do like two or three. Okay, so here's the bake. Pretty clean. There's some stretching here, but that's, that's stretching that's in the uh, high poly. And I don't even think you'll notice it because you're back here. Then it's just a matter of making a material. And I already have my like initial temple stone material. Just drag that up here. And then just make some tuning based on like scale. It's like the mortar stuff I don't actually like. I need to save this smart material again because I end up changing these properties the same every time now. Let me turn this up a tad. the mortar and then I go to the mud Check the mud mud looks mud looks fine it's kind of a weird color maybe we'll just do that and then let's go to the moss moss is fine look over here uh, edges edges is where I end up updating this thing again uh, because for some reason the UV scale is like super, super high. Just lower that. It will like scale it up, turn the contrast up. And then, uh, and then I just export out the maps. So dude, it's like way faster. It's I'm like super stoked about this. Asgard, how you doing? Uh, Corey, you don't need to know Moto. I mean, the only things I was doing in Moto, you can do in uh, in Max and or Maya. If you actually, if you give me give me a moment, What's up, Root? How you doing? Pid. How are things? How's everyone doing, by the way? There's a lot of you that just came in. Okay, let's let's close this and reopen it. I just installed a bunch of scripts back into Moto. But yeah, most of this process, the only things that have really changed in the workflow is just getting that low poly generated in, um, oh God, in uh, ZBrush. I'm doing good. It's Friday for me. This, this Friday on a Thursday thing is pretty cool. Let's see if we can't do. I'm just going to use the scripts that I know. Selection. Dude, this Seneca script stuff is badass. If you're using Moto, you should totally download this. Uh, select coplanar polys. Fast. Yeah, so I just click that, right? And we're actually going to. Uh, Press F5, pull the commands, history, uh, select type, where was it at? Lazy select by poly, is that it?
we're gonna do control shift D so yes okay so I click a poly control shift D and then just start deselecting stuff like this just go around make sure everything do a check all I'm checking for is if uh, I feel like that stuff should be included in the island for the unwrap so making a judgment call based on that so if you see that and then I make those edges hard if I select hard edges you've got that piece right ah uh, see here's a problem What is going on? There we go. No? Oh man, I'm running into all types of issues today. It's like, fine, we'll just delete those. Okay, so let's check the edges. Okay, so these ones need to be soft. Wow, there's a lot of cleanup actually that I'm needing to do in this. So essentially I'm cleaning up edges with either making them hard or soft and I'm trying to make sure that this edge is pretty clean because you can think about this is going to be the island top, right? What's up, Ben? Uh, so with that said, uh, let's just let's try and do some more of these. Actually, I won't, I won't bore you guys with this stuff. I'm just going to... I mean, I got lazy select on. Freaking hate lazy select. Okay, so if you look at the, whoops, if we select hard edge, you can see that. And then if I do unwrap tool and click, obviously all this stuff is on its own because I didn't harden those edges. But you can see this top piece is a pretty clean island now if I do that with all the pieces and then select by hard edge and then just hit unwrap tool I can get all of this stuff unwrapped in like one click super nice so okay let's go back to ZBrush and we'll play around a bit more with uh, building some low polys yeah this stuff is I don't know about that probably clean all those up after uh, generating all this also, this edge I would probably turn to connect these two. But let's go ahead and just do another one. Oh, so we already did this one, but I'll do it again. So. Okay, so with this, good to go. Crease, want clay polish, sharpen a little bit. Oh man. So I'm thinking that this noise stuff is going to be good for us in the end. We'll see. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I'll open the side here. Z plug in. We're going to process this. How you doing, Ben? Hey, Tobias. What is up? Happy Thursday. Just wait on this process.
Uh, Reeds. Aren't you in Sweden? Tomorrow's like a holiday. You're good? Awesome. Awesome. Alright, this is done. So let's try lowering it. Let's. We're going to do 50% increments just so we can see what's happening. Okay, so this is obviously not enough. Let's do 5% and see. Okay, so we're just going to smooth some of this stuff out. So it becomes a bit more uniform. There's a bit of a pinch there. That's fine. I mean, I could probably, if I wanted to, we could select the the edge borders that I'm interested in keeping, and then just do a smooth. But this is this is okay. So then we'll pre-process it again. You see, all the edges are being retained pretty well. There's a lot of geo on those edges. Basically, what we want to do is remove a lot of the the edges inside of these faces. So this is a five percent decrease from the last one. Still looking pretty good. A lot of this this information in here is being cleaned up. Should be all right. Process it again. Let's see if this might be too much. Yeah. So see, we're losing a lot of information right here. We decimate. This corner here is basically gone, so it's like not good for the low poly. And we're getting some really weird shit going on in here. It might be best to uh, smooth that out. Oh, you know why that might be like that? Hang on. No, I'm wrong. We're okay. I'm like, what is that? Let's see. Let's check the rest of the mesh. See if make sure everything's okay. We'll process it again. We'll go up higher percentage, that way we're not crushing things as much. So we don't want to look in here. This is where a lot of shape information is going to get lost, right? So it's best one of the best areas to, to keep an eye on. So just keep doing this. And you'll notice I don't need to undo. Uh, unless I pre-process current again, it's just changing the percentage of decimation on the last pre-process. So we're just raising this up until we get to a, something that looks, looks all right. And then we'll smooth some, some stuff out. Just trying to uniform some of this information that way uh, it decimation doesn't try to favor any of it to try and retain. It's kind of like this point. If I can move that out like that, it might uh, try and get rid of it instead of retaining retaining that corner point, which we don't really want. Yeah, there's weird shit going on in that corner. All right. Process it again. Let's do half of what it was before. So it looks like we're getting close. This looks like uh, any lower and we might start losing because now we're starting to like, if you see on the silhouette here, we're starting to get stepping. And you shouldn't, don't care about the stepping as much if you can help it. Because you could go through and like, um, clean up these, these big broad faces in like your 3D package afterwards, right? Get rid of a lot of those edges. But yeah.
Yeah, Tobias, you're right. Uh, usually for the first decimation, I'll just crush it. Um, but if you notice that there are certain details that are getting lost like immediately, then yeah, you should go in smaller increments. Most def. Anywho, so this is, I mean, for the most part, minus some of the, the geo and these flat faces, it's pretty good. I mean, I'm already further along than I would have been if I was trying to do this manually, right? So then I could take this into ZBrush and then, or into Moto, remove a lot of these edges, collapse shapes down put verts where I want them. Actually, let me save this. And uh, let's see what happens with the Z modeler. And we'll, sh oh yeah, I always forget, like you have to be over here if you want to change the brush size or go up here. So let's, let's highlight an edge and let's try and collapse. <laughs> There's weird shit going on, guys. There we go. The other nice thing is, uh, I'm gonna do some of these. If I want this edge to collapse down here instead of like, see how it's collapsing down there? If I hold down the click and or the pen and move it around, I can choose which vert it focuses on for the collapse, which is pretty nice. So if you want to favor one over the other, it's a good way to preview what you're doing too. Holding alt and clicking it will split the edge. We don't want to do that, but that's interesting. So yeah, lots of, lots of uh, easy, I think this is easy cleanup. You just, Cut down on that poly count. Uh, we're just right now, we're just looking at um, a different way of uh, generating low polys from the high poly sculpts. Oh man, yeah, and you have to be careful with this. So if you right click, you'll get your your list as well. And whenever you are moused over, when you let go is what, what get, tends to get selected, what? Yeah, there we go. Super weird. But this tool is pretty impressive because you can do all types of, what is going on here? You can do all types of, uh, I guess, masking. Well, that's interesting. Huh. Anyways, yeah, that, that tool is crazy complex, super fast. Definitely would take some getting used to. Uh, can you mask areas that are not affected by the decimation? Uh, no, you cannot. That'd be, uh, that'd be pretty nice. So you're like, if you wanted to, so basically I am technically masking by using the creasing that's happening, right? So like, if you look at this mesh, this mesh is actually a good example of some details that you don't want, uh, like this deep cut stuff. I probably can get away with that being in the uh, normal map, right? So let's, so basically I'm making, 
I'm making masks by sharpening the edges because that's what Decimation Master wants to look at the most. So let's go ahead and we'll remove that stuff. And then we'll sharpen this and look at the So like, instead of masks, I'm just, uh, let's go about that far. Instead of masks, I'm just going in and making sure that the detail is sharp and that should be my mask. So I do like a clay polish, do another one. So you can see like uh, geometry is with a clay polish triggered. Geometry tries to, to uh, compress itself around uh, harsh changes in normal direction, which is how I'm getting this. Like, it looks kind of melted right now. I wonder what that top area looked like. Hang on here. Probably don't need that. Probably don't need this either. So it'll just complicate the low poly, right? Unnecessary detail in the low poly. Like this, this one's deep and wide enough that I'm just gonna commit to it. But uh, okay, let's let's try this polishing again. So now I've got some nice creases happening. And we'll process this one. This Red Bull's big. I can't handle it. I don't know. What do you guys think about this process? Is it intriguing? Does it look? Uh, does it look easy? Huh? Wow. That's an interesting uh, decimation. Completely ignored that side. I wonder why. But yeah, if there's one thing I can say about Decimation Master from what I've experienced so far, uh, it's definitely like trying stuff. Undo it, try another way, undo it try some other stuff like what happens if I clay polish again it doesn't look like it changes the shape all that much so we just process that again decimate it down process Start doing it in increments of twenty five. Try Z remesher after decimation. I don't know, man. Uh, what I experienced so the night that I ended up staying up really late, uh, what I experienced with Z remesher is that it does really good with more organic shapes like tree roots and stuff. We'll probably be using zero mesh a lot. Like when we do the giant tree with the face in the center of the scene. This is looking pretty good. And uh, if you mouse over the, the little thumbnail here, it'll tell you what the poly count is. This is 12,500 right now. And obviously it's, it's counting triangles. Try that again. What are we looking at now? 3,122. I mean, you could, this is probably fine. 
and just try one more. Yeah, I think this is good. I come home from gym, I see stream, I watch stream. I'm sweating in my living room. <laughs> Quad draw? You talking about uh, drawing outlines and... I believe it does, uh, Tobias. Is that the last one of the group? Oh, there's two more. All right, let's do these ones really fast and then we can just look at like the end result. You guys have any questions about this, uh, this weird ass process? <laughs> Totally got you in it, awesome. Probably use a more harsh material to see any shapes that we can smooth out. This is a, actually a good reason to not use uh, those alphas that I was playing with, the ones that are adding all these little details. Because it just adds information that uh, Decimation Master is going to try and look at. Devo, what's up? How you doing? Welcome to the stream. Juku, uh, Juku Junti, thanks for the follow. A little late. Uh, yeah, yeah, the one that showed me your uh, your division build. I remember you. All right, so let's go ahead and process this. I probably should have saved before I did that. I didn't save the last one. So after this stuff, we're actually gonna look at um, switching from light maps to, um, what is it, the light volume propagation, the LVP, and then checking out the other one, which is um, DFGI, which is distance field GI. You get some really nice AO from that stuff. Thanks, Diva. Diva! Okay. Let's see here. So we've, we've processed that. Let's go with the uh, 50%. We'll decimate it. See what, see what we get. Some crazy, crazy shit going on here. Nice. Apparently really smooth there. Let's uh, process again. I should show a Marvelous on stream. I should probably get decent at Marvelous before I show that on stream. So we're just decimating these down. Smooth some of this stuff out. It's like the coolest looking wireframe movement. It's 
It's like I'm massaging some geometric alien. So, how are the kids? Oh, you're really tense right here. I'm gonna have to uh, work that, uh, that geo out of you. So, I do need to do the pre-process current. Every time I want it to analyze the mesh as if what I'm seeing right now is the high poly. So every time you click that, it's like resetting, right? And then it'll pay attention to 50% of what it's seeing. The ping? Oh, that's all good. What'd you, what'd you ping me about? Oh, cool. There we go. All right, back to the thing. Okay, so let's look at uh, smoothing some more of this stuff out. Processing. When you talk to your own work. <laughs> Uh, I, I guess, yeah. That's really funny, actually. So what are we looking at polycount wise here? Uh, 2,900. Where is this in reference to everything else? It's still, eh, it's kind of far away from the player. Density wise, compared to the things around it, it's, I can probably lower just a little bit more. That should be okay. And then we can go in and clean all this stuff up. I'll do that off stream. I'm gonna try and do less uh, technical topology, st or topology stuff on, on stream. Unless it's to show you guys something. So let's see what we're looking at here. Uh, one more. All right. Gabe, how you doing? Nephilim number six, what's up? So let's go ahead, let's polish this guy. Man, sometimes the algorithm does the weirdest shit. Super strange. Let's try that one more time, see what happens. Getting a little, a little too warpy. It's probably this guy, let's just We'll just do that once. We'll process that. <laughs> Every brick custom design? No, no. Uh, that's not that's not the case at all. Uh, in actual development, it, it really depends. An oscillator, great name by the way. Um, so for this specific model. This is, uh, I'll, sh I'll show you after this one. I'll show you after this one. Let's go ahead and process this guy. So we've, we've uh, pre-processed it. Let's start decimating it down 50% at a time. What in the, what in the, hang on. Dynamic subdivisions was on. All right, so if you see, uh, oh God damn it, I just hit divide on the mesh. Uh, so if you see a uh, weird, like verts that are orange, like like uh, like you saw when I did the thing, this is totally gonna crash. When I decimated, that means that you have dynamic subdivisions on, which I think you can accidentally do by doing Control D. It's just this guy right here. So we need to process this again without that on. Yeah.
Yeah, it's, it's a cool name, man. It's funny. Thanks for stopping by, by the way. I don't know how long you'll be around, but hello. Every tumbleweed we actually grow in a three-dimensional farm, and then we handpick in place. <laughs> Man, that is so weird that it does that. We'll just smooth that out. Yeah. I'm wondering too. I'm like, it's for some reason it's ignoring like this whole, this whole back piece here. We'll make it not ignore it. How about that? You know, a funny thing about things like plants and tumbleweeds is it is kind of getting to that point where you will go outside and you'll be like, that one looks awesome. And then you'll like, that one looks awesome. And you'll, you'll pick it and then take pictures of slices of it to put into a game after handcrafting and reconstructing that slice to like make a volume. So it's, it's almost like what you're saying. Thanks for the follow, dude. <laughs> I construct every asset from the atom up. Well, if we're talking about substance, technically you do. With the atom nodes. Oh, Jesus. What is going on in this madness? There we go, starting to... But you could turn this into a script where it does pre-process current, then decimate current at 50% five times. Thanks for the follow. Welcome to the stream too. So yeah, this looks, um, what are we at here? This is at a thousand polys. That's acceptable. Let's go ahead and save the uh, topo version. Hide that, go all the way up here. Let's do a, so if you do a merge visible, you'll get a new sub tool that's got all of them put together. So you can see there's a bit of a geometric density, uh, there's lack of parity between them. That makes, that makes sense. So like this guy and this guy, uh, this whole, like these, these front three here, Maybe a little high, at least compared to their others, the other guys. But uh, this is now, I mean, this is at like a point, I think, where you could, where you might be able to get away with, let's see what it cost wise. 13,000 13, polys? You clean up these faces, you'll probably be pretty good. delete that one we'll go back here we'll go to this one and we'll decimate this one again one more time yeah so this is this is going to be automating essentially a lot of my low poly workflow I mean, I think I could pos possibly do this at work as well, and then I would just have to clean up the, these faces. But I mean, you know, when you're working on uh, building-like stuff, I don't think you would do a lot of stuff like this anyways. 
when you make open world games, you're not necessarily hand authoring like piece by piece in the same sense. Like you hardly ever are using ZBrush in the industry unless you're a character artist. Yeah, it should be okay. Okay, so let's let's uh, merge visible again and see what the so now it's at twelve thousand six hundred. I think it's going to be kind of high no matter what. We'll just have to clean up those faces later. So okay, so we've talked about that. Let me uh, get some of the other stuff ready, and we're going to look at Unreal. Uh, before I get that started, I'm going to actually Okay, so I'm going to switch to this screen. This is something I'm trying. <laughs> 